But let's talk about what on earth is happening in our schools. Uh, Lawrence Fox is leader of the Reclaim Party and they've announced the release of a, well, very hard-hitting new documentary looking at the uh, dangerous sexualisation of our children in our schools, often without parents' knowledge. New video, Groomed, How Schools Sexualise Your Children, looks at, uh, well, the incredibly politicised and divisive ideologies on critical race theory, on gender theory uh, and transgender tool toolkits that are being, well, they claim, shoved down children's throats in those awfully named PSHE lessons. If you're a parent, you go, what's that again? It's your personal, social, health and economic education. Let's talk to Lawrence Fox now, leader of the Reclaim Party. Good morning to you. Morning, Julia. How are you doing? Very well indeed. Lovely to speak to you. Um, this video, um, we're playing some clips of it. I mean, a lot of it is difficult for us to to uh, to play on air. A lot of people be quite concerned about what's in it. Um, first of all, before we talk about what's in it, why did you think that it was necessary to, to look into this issue? Well, I think like most parents, I assumed that my children were at school were being taught the three R's, reading, writing and arithmetic. And, um, and you know, I... I trusted the school to do that and then suddenly one day my eldest son was going to bed and I said give us a hug good night as I do every night and he went no you need my consent what I went, I went I beg your pardon and he went yes and you need my consent so I then emailed the school and I said um my son obviously doesn't understand what consent is and why are you teaching my son consent about his relationship with his father? So this confused, they then sent an email back saying, look, we've got a problem with this ourselves because some children are not consenting to eating broccoli at uh, lunch. <laughs> but then I thought, I'll look into this a bit more. And so I went, I approached my other son's school and I asked them for their P-A-S-H-E lesson plans. And within these plans, you are finding some very, aside from all of the usual stuff, like the world's about to end because of climate catastrophe oh, yeah. and all, all of the normal stuff that they teach, they indoctrinate children with, um, you find these very, very contentious things, like the fact that for some people, their gender identity does not correspond with their biological sex. Now, now that, to teach to a 10-year-old child, I think is extremely contentious and very, very worrying. They also teach the concept of white privilege and diversity, equity and inclusion. And, it, I, and it, 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 it angered me so much that parents, they were doing this, uh, you know, underhandedly, that I thought I'm in a producer resource for parents to be able to see exactly what it is that their children are being taught in these indoctrination classes. Well, I mean, do people have a, a right to see what their children are being taught? We've, we've seen a, a parent recently, uh, who uh, Kim Isherwood, who's won a High Court review against the Welsh Government uh, to stop making sex education compulsory from the age of three because of some of the things they're being taught. Now, what we would expect is, I, mean, I think, you know, liberal, you know, I think both very liberal in terms of our views on an awful lot of things. Um, I'm, I'm certain you know, I talked openly about about lots of these things, and you know, used the correct body part words with my daughter, and and we, you know, we talked about puberty. And I'm, I'm not in denial about anything, but an awful lot of the stuff that children are being taught as uh, in this realm of what we used to think of as just you know general sexual sex education and health education, um, and talking about your feelings and like it, as you say, it's very politicised very very contentious indeed um and stuff which frankly is not backed up by this thing we've been talking about for the last few years the science well that's the point the point you make is is exactly the right one it's the job of the parent to teach a child about consent so when i wrote back to the school and i said i've told my children what consent is you don't invade someone's private space and you don't touch them inappropriately or anything like that and they said oh we don't teach them that till year nine and i said well you can take it from me that both my children are now at year year nine levels of yeah. consent but so you don't teach that till year nine because I remember teaching that in primary school about you know just about you know your body you know your body's your body and 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 no one can touch your body without your permission and and, and you know you you have private parts of your body that are you know not for other people to touch because that's an important thing for them to know and then and you need to tell mummy and daddy if someone does you know and and if anyone makes you feel uncomfortable but that's different from you need permission to hug me dad. I know. I, I just think it's it, it's another example of the state trying to in, to 
trying to di- disrupt the family unit yeah. in some way. And, and, you know, the family unit is so important. Mm-hmm. And, and the idea of teaching diversity, equity and inclusion is also deeply anti-British because in Britain we believe in equality. We don't believe in equity. We're a meritocratic society and that's what we believe. Mm-hmm. So to, to indoctrinate children into essentially what is a communist ideology um, without telling the parents, and mm-hmm. if a parent does ask the school for the resources that these uh, that their kids are being taught, often the school will say, no, I can't reveal these resources due to copyright issues. Yeah, which is a load of nonsense, isn't it? We have a right to know what our children are being taught. But this is it, isn't it? We, we think we're being taught, you know, our children are being taught, you know, not to be racist and, and by diversity and respecting other people. But that, that what they're being taught now is very different from what, say, we would have been taught in school um, about, you know, about, you know, you say fairness and, and respect for people and not judging people based on their, their appearance, their skin colour or anything, or, but, but, or religion or sex sexuality or anything but judging people by you know the whole you know martin Luther king character uh you know and what, what's on what goes on inside but children are being taught this sort of you know black lives matter um sort of you have to be what is it anti-racist you're not just not racist and that's a very different thing and as you mentioned you know this idea of white privilege telling a whole bunch of black kids that they're victims and white kids that they are evil you know descendants of slave owners i mean this stuff is really unhealthy well, it's, it's what I always say, you know, they are the exact thing they accuse you of. What is the opposite of an anti-racist? It's a racist, mm-hmm. right? So they've removed the idea of someone not being racist, and therefore they've removed the idea of what Martin Luther King said, which is judge someone on the content of their character rather than the colour of their skin, which was an extremely progressive and wonderful <laughs> piece of civil rights work. And that should have been the end of it. That's about as far as we can go. But now these, these this diversity industry, teaching children that not only not to be racist but they are racist by dint of their skin color that all white children are racist this doesn't just exist in schools we've got we work as you know we've started the bad law project this is this exists in um the tavistock clinic have done exploring Mm -hmm. whiteness they you've got it in the in the judiciary in the equal treatment bench book the definition of a racist is it is pervasive pervading society and it's all and it's all changed without sort of our consent without a national debate about it because again you you'd also talk about how organizations like Stonewall, which did fantastic work on gay rights, but I think their work on trans rights is is just misogynistic, you know, erasing of women now. Mermaid, it's an organisation set up by a woman who, whose uh, own son, she, she she says, is is trans. And um, um, and, and some of the stuff they, they talk about, again, the, the, this idea, again, that, that, that you could be born in the wrong body, there's no medical or biological evidence for this. People think they are, and they're welcome to live the life they want to lead where those the, their right to do that doesn't trample on other people's rights. So a right to a woman or a girl to go to the toilet and or, or get changed or, or compete in sport, we'll talk about next, uh, not against a biological male. Um, but this is it. They're being taught stuff which is considered to be very, very different divisive, controversial, political ideology in our schools, which are supposed to be political free zones, um, parents aren't being told about it. But but the vast majority of people in this country don't think that children are assigned their their gender at birth and they can change it at will. I mean, parent, most parents would be absolutely horrified by their child doing that. We know, I know what I had. I had a little girl. I looked down and everyone looked down and it was a little girl. We didn't we didn't have a committee meeting about it. We knew what she was. I mean, what, how do you, how did this happen? I I think it's a a general thing of the fact that these ideologies are not successful at the ballot box. So what (laughs) happens? They, they, they are moved into our institutions and that our institutions are corrupted. Now, every single human on earth deserves our love and compassion and equal treatment. And there are going to be those children with body dysmorphia, yeah. etc. And and this is and it's difficult for them. But we must, as parents, take responsibility for, for, for them until they can make those decisions for themselves. And there is an overwhelming move now to say, in order for a child to really get the proper transition, it needs to happen pre-puberty and that in itself is very dangerous so we were the politically what the reclaim party are going to do is propose and at the end of the documentary there is is a children's charter because we had one in 1908 which was the first ever distinction between an adult and a child it, it involved things like you can't smoke and stuff like that and the right and to that, education things like that yeah. And we need we need to bring back a children's charter to make sure that our kids are taught to, to think critically. That, that absolutely these uh, contentious ideologies like uh, critical race theory and all of that should be discussed as yeah. part 
of a broader curriculum, yeah. not the, as a one the, thing that a child learns. And the key thing is, parents should have a right to know what their children are being taught. And 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 if and if and if the schools are so sure that it's not controversial, um, then they'd be quite happy to tell teach kids what you know, tell the parents what their kids are learning. And if they're not, maybe best to. Uh, best make some inquiries about it you know what guys you know stand uh, stand and, and help help like, become you know on the board of the school the governors and try and have a say that way lawrence fox leader of the reclaim party lovely to speak to you thank you so much Nine forty-three is the time